Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Committee on Government Operations. The purposes of today's meeting, Thursday, March 9th, nice day, 2023, at 3 p.m. in conference room 225 is to receive governor's message 520. Submitting for consideration and confirmation is the comptroller, Department of Accounting and General Services, gubernatorial nominee Keith Regan for a term to expire 1207. 2026. 20, we will go ahead and we have the list of, hello, list of testifiers. And I'm joined by my vice chair, Senator Gabbard, and by my esteemed committee member and chair of Health and Human Services, Senator Sam Wayne Ventura, and our other committee members will probably be joining us soon. So first up, we have for testifiers uh, for the nomination of GM520 is Josh Green, MD, Governor, Office of the Governor, State of Hawaii. Written testimony in support. Mailing Silliman in acting as an individual. Yeah. And Senator Wakai. Good afternoon, Chair McKelvey, Vice Chair Gabbard, and members of the committee, Mailing Silliman. Um, I have submitted written testimony, would like to take a couple of minutes uh, for a few words from Please. my uh, controller. So prior to him coming over to DAGS, I've only spoken to him once over the phone and shared a couple of emails on a matter related to DCCA. So I really don't know him prior to that. Yeah. But since then, I've worked with him on a daily basis, uh, work week, including weekends. And I found him to be really very passionate about what he does, very dedicated. Um, he's very excited about the opportunities and, and the possibilities of doing, making positive changes in the department. And I found him in, in all the um, meetings and, and all, all, all the times when we've met together to strategize on things. This is very intelligent. He has the ability to, to learn and pick up on things very quickly, in depth, and not just on the surface. And he is a, a people person. He works well with all levels of stakeholders. Um, I, I'm very fortunate to have someone that, that I can work with, that we have shared vision. We look at things pretty much um, the same way but he always has a positive spin to it, which I find very refreshing. Um, so with his extensive background in the various leadership positions, uh, both the state and county uh, government, uh, he comes with the experience that will serve him well as a comptroller. So I, I, I just want to uh, express my uh, strong support for him. And I respectfully uh, request um, confirmation of uh, Keith as comptroller. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here and appreciate your testimony as an individual. Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator, State Procurement Office. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator. Uh, the State Procurement Office will stand on its written testimony in support of Keith's a nomination on a personal note. I just wanted to say that in all my interactions with Keith, he's been a consummate professional and very supportive of, of the SPO, which we are truly grateful. And we hope that you will uh, support his nomination as well. Thank you for giving the opportunity to testify. Okay. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Uh, Louis Salaveria, Director, Department of Budget and Finance. I think he's in a meeting with one of my colleagues, but I ran into him in the hallway and he did express his support for the nominee, um, which is reflected in his testimony. Sabrina Nasir, Deputy Director, Department of Budget and Finance, written in support. Gary Suganuma, Director of DOTAX, written in support. Jay Butai, Interim Director, Department of Labor Industrial Relations. Written in support, we have DLNR, um, Department of Land and Natural Resources. I believe from the director, Don Chang, or general director, sorry. Tommy Johnson, Director of Public Sa uh, Safety. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. Kathy Betts, Director, Department of Human Services. Written in support, Sharon Hurd, Chairperson, Department of Ag. 
written in support. Keith Hayashi, superintendent, also written in support. Department of Health, um, from the Department of Health, I think this is Dr. Fink, written in support. Um, Rina Hashimoto, D Heard. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And we have Cheryl Park, Director of Office of Information Practices. Um, I just would like to add to my written testimony that I think that Keith's broad experience at the state and county level, combined with Mei Ling's in-depth experience at DAGS, will give us a really great team at DAGS. And I found Keith to be very open and communicative and willing to learn what the like our atta the attached agencies do along with, of course, his own DAGS divisions. So I would strongly support his um, confirmation today. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we have Doug Murdoch, CIO of EGS. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Ryan Andrews, stadium manager from DBED, soon to be overhauled stadium in support. Len Higashi, executive director of Hawaii Technology Development Corp. Written in support as well. Scott Nago, Office of Elections, written in support. We also have Michael Fromby, who's not on Zoom. Okay, City and County Honolulu, Managing Director, also in support. We also have the City and County Honolulu Department of Emergency Management Director in support. Nicholas Crow, Shopo, in support. Uh, we have Annalisa Sanoa, Tuya Sosopa, Operating Engineers Local 3 of Hawaii, written in support. We have William Kamai, Senior Service Rep, Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, written in support. We have Hawaii Harbor Users Group. They, too, have sent written testimony in support. I'm going to just do one thing here. Okay. We've also received numerous pieces of testimonies from individuals and groups, members that you have in your record of testimony. All of them are in support. So noting all of this, is there anybody in the audience who is here today who would like to come up and testify either for or against the a new friend? <laughs> My bestest buddy, <laughs> Mr. Washington. <laughs> You know, I think that's going to stick with me for a while. I don't know how many texts I've received since yesterday with George Washington's picture on it. <laughs> uh, Jordan Lowe, uh, Director of uh, Department of Law Enforcement. Good afternoon, Chair McKelvey, Vice Chair Gabbert, and members of the committee. I've, I've only uh, started recently working with Keith, and I, I know he has a very difficult job because all of the departments are always pulling on him for resources. Uh, in my time working with him and trying to find a new headquarters for the Department of Law Enforcement, he's always been very professional, um, responsive, and he's genuinely a good person. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director. We appreciate you being here. Is there anybody else in the audience? Why don't we go ahead and start with our interim DBED Director. Come on up, sir. Thank you, sir. I submitted a uh, written testimony, but mm -hmm. uh, also want to stand on that, but also say that I had the honor of working with Keith at HTA uh, while he was there and then um, believe he is well qualified to be the comptroller and very excited to continue working with him. So I ask for strong support for his nomination. State your name, please. Chris Sadeyasu with DBIT. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, yes, Mr. Glenn, followed by Kristen. Aloha, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. I just want to state support for the comptroller, for Keith Regan. He's conscientious, hardworking, and he starts with yes and tries to find how to make things work. And I think that's very important for this department. And we'll appreciate his leadership in working with him. You need to say your point. Sorry, Scott Glenn, Even Office of Planning and are. Sustainable <laughs> Development. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Good point. Okay. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members, Kristen Izumi Nitao, Executive Director, Campaign Spending Commission. I submitted a uh, written testimony in support, but I didn't hear it. So just in case, um, I'm here today because um, we strongly support uh, Keith Regan as comptroller. Um, I think what I wanted to illustrate is 
Um, we are an administratively attached agency. And, you know, usually we've had times of transition of leadership. And I have found um, Keith to be extremely responsive, very professional, very supportive, very transparent, very accountable. And um, as an administratively attached agency, we have certainly appreciated. So we are here today in support of this nominee. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Kristen. Yes. Chair and members, uh, Nathaniel Kinney, Hoy Regional Council of Carpenters. Uh, we deal a lot with issues that DAGS uh, deals with, like construction and procurement, things that are very near and dear to us. And uh, we think that the nominee has the requisite skills and experience necessary to lead the department forward, and we're in full support. Thank you. Okay, thank you for being here, man. Anybody else who wishes to come forward and testify either for or against the nominee? If not, I'd like to invite the nominee to come up in front of the committee to submit his testimony and say any remarks he may have. Honorable Chair McKelvey, Vice Chair Gabbard, members of the Senate's Committee on Government Operations. My name is Keith Regan. I'm the nominee for Comptroller for the State of Hawaii Department of Accounting and General Services. I wanna start by thanking each of you for the opportunity to be before you today. Um, I know that you have a lot of other busy things on your schedule, but I do appreciate you taking the time for this confirmation hearing. I would like to also thank Governor Green and his team for the honor uh, to uh, be a part of this uh, transition and part of this cabinet. I appreciate his trust and faith in me and my ability to be able to serve as comptroller. I would also like to particularly thank my patient, understanding, and loving wife, Lynn Araki Regan, for <laughs> extremely patient <laughs> and understanding more patient. <laughs> for, for encouraging me and allowing me to follow my passion of public service. She's always been my guiding light, <clears throat> kept me focused on the reason we both entered this career of public service, which was to help those less fortunate, to make life better for our children and to leave this place better than how we found it. I'd also like to thank our son, Riley, who's not here. He's at school, thankfully. I hope he's at school. You better be at school. Um, for putting up with us, you know, for allowing me to serve, for allowing me to commit myself, both of us to commit ourselves to public service. And then also want to thank my in-laws, Fred and Anna Rocky, who are here today, uh, who have selflessly sacrificed so much time to support us um, as we're involved in, in various different public service responsibilities. And I owe them deeply and greatly and I'll never be able to repay them for all that they've done to help support this career path of mine. And then finally, I do wanna thank my parents, um, my, my mom and dad, Dan and Pat Regan, you may have met them from time to time. They live in Waikapu. Uh, they made tremendous sacrifices throughout their lives to support me. And I believe that the servant heart that I have today was formed by them, uh, by their instilling the values that they did within me as a child. And I. I do want to say lastly, I want to thank all the testifiers that took the time out of their busy schedules, spent countless hours drafting and submitting testimony on my behalf. To all these people in my life, my family, my friends, my colleagues, my former bosses, you, senators of this committee, just want to say mahalo. Chair of the committee is in receipt of my resume, which details my diverse work experience, community service, and organizations that I've been involved in over the years. I consider myself to be fortunate to have found a career path that is not only employment, but more importantly, my passion. The ability to serve the public, to help make a difference, to positively change lives is what drives and energizes me every single day. My extensive work at the County of Maui and the State of Hawaii have provided me with a solid foundation and the opportunity to serve, which I have taken very seriously. It is through the programs, projects, plans, and actions we have collectively made a difference in our community. I use the term we because in public service, you must have the ability to bring people together to overcome challenges that may initially appear to be insurmountable, but become solvable when we work collaboratively. Throughout my career, I have taken the approach of being an open, collaborative and thoughtful leader. I've made myself accessible to those I serve within the organization and to those I serve externally. I'm a firm believer in the golden rule, treating others the way you would want to be treated. 
I've learned that by putting yourself into the other person's shoes, changing your perspective to see the world and issues through their eyes, and being willing to set aside predispositions have allowed me to navigate extremely challenging and sometimes competing needs. Since joining GAGS in December, we have developed and embraced our mission and vision and committed ourselves to improve operational efficiency and effectiveness, to embrace new ways of thinking and strategies to overcome challenges, to modernize our systems, processes, and procedures, to support our team and invest in their growth, focus on, and to focus on, their custom, on customer service and meeting the needs of those we serve while also shaping and guiding DAGs into becoming the best department in the state. Apologize to the other departments that are here, but that's just my personal point. Our focus has been, and will continue to be on establishing short, medium, and long-term goals with the proper measurements to ensure we are moving in the right direction. Our priority areas of focus will be on the following, addressing the top department's significant vacancies, which we've had many discussions on, tackling the ever-increasing deferred maintenance backlog that continues to grow every single year, reinvigorating and moving the enterprise financial system and enterprise resource planning system forward, building a customer-focused team and culture at DAGS, enhancing our capital district and the state capital campus, improving and enhancing our communications, and providing the necessary support to our neighbor island district offices who oftentimes feel that maybe they've been neglected a little bit. Conducting process reviews, implementing process improvements and investing in our people through training is also something that we'll be focused on, as well as reducing our dependency on leased office space as per statute, while also enhancing our existing facilities and grounds. We will continue to place our focus and attention on these areas, but we will not limit ourselves to what has been listed here or what I've explained to you or shared with you. We are committed to embracing a philosophy of continuous improvement and as such, we'll regularly revisit these priorities, priority areas of focus. This will include our commitment to working collaboratively with this committee to ensure that we are meeting your needs and your expectations of us. If I'm provided the opportunity to serve you in this role as comptroller, my goal will be to change perceptions, improve our operations, and shape DAGs into one of the best departments in the state. I will work tirelessly alongside our team here at DAGs to move us forward in the right direction. I'm committed to utilizing the experiences, skills, and knowledge I've gained throughout the 16 years of public service to overcome the many challenges ahead. I humbly ask for your support in this role as, com as comptroller. And I am appreciative for the opportunity to be before you this afternoon. Again, mahalo to the many testifiers that came out to support my confirmation. Mahalo again to my loving wife and family for supporting me in this passion for service. Mahalo to Governor Green for providing me this opportunity. And mahalo to you, Chair McKelvey, Vice Chair Gabbard, and members of this committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open it up for questions of the nominee. And so I will yield to any of the members who'd like to ask questions. Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's, start, let's start with Senator Wakai, then you, and then Vice Chair, and then I will ask. Thank you. Um, first of all, Keith, you have the best voice of any of the <laughs> director <laughs> nominees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's a plus. <laughs> Uh, and I've always enjoyed working with you ever since you came over from Maui to head uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority as their uh, operating officer there. But in that capacity, you had to deal with the leaking roof at the convention center. I think we see today the folly of going all design build and having uh, maintenance deferred and deferred and deferred and the price tag only goes higher and higher and higher. So I want to understand in your new capacity where you have much more, many more buildings and structures to take care of, um, what your thoughts are on public-private partnerships and where you see any potential within DAGs. I know not all state facilities can go PPP, but do you see opportunities where we can really partner with the, with the private sector to help maintain things rather than always looking for the taxpayers to, to foot mm -hmm. that bill? Thanks for that question, and I will try to use my best uh, TV voice in my answer. 
Um, yeah, I actually do see an opportunity there with DBFM or DBFOM, which is design, build, finance, operate, maintain, or design, build, finance, maintain different models of P3 um, that we should be looking at, especially where the state may have a challenge in finding resources to fund different facility improvements. Um, we all know that um, although we have you know, cash now, in the future, we may not have access to either cash or we may have limited bonds that we can issue. And so I think we need to be very creative in the way that we approach these different large projects that we have. Um, you know, I'm open to exploring these different models. I think we need to really put them in front of us to make a decision in terms of which direction we're going to go. And then once we determine that direction, we need to stay the course. Um, I think that's extremely important, especially for the P3 situations that we're talking about. So I think um, I would be open to doing that, open to looking at it um, and making the best decision for the state. Um, as it relates to the convention center, you're absolutely right. That convention center, unfortunately, has a lot of issues, um, a lot of issues that can only be fixed with a lot of money. Um, and, you know, to your point, design build, I think, is what got us there. What we maybe should have looked at was a little bit different model that shifted the risk away from the state and put it on the contractor. Right. So the DBFM or DBFOM model is a similar is what I'm talking about. That may have been the better choice. Um, in that particular scenario. And if we were to go back in time, you know, that would be something that I would probably be pushing for. Are we close Thank to you, getting a uh, stadium RFP out? Uh, thanks for that question, Senator. I'd have to defer to uh, the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism on that. Um, I will tell you, though, that we're in support of whatever direction that the that DBED and the stadium authority and the governor decide to move forward in. And pledge our support to make sure that we can move forward and support them in that effort. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So, um, thank you so much, yeah. and and thank you for allowing me to interview you um, before you came in um, before today. And as you know, we all know that there is a huge labor shortage right. when we went through the confirmation of your first deputy yesterday. What are your priorities? Mm -hmm. Because with a limited workforce, the legislator needs to know how you're going to focus your limited resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are your priorities? Yeah, thank you for that, Senator. Um, my, I'll give you my top three. I have, a, I have actually a top 10 list that okay. um, we can go through, but just for the purposes of time, um, the yeah, top the three, the world. thank you, top three, vacancies, deferred maintenance, and the EFS project. Those are my top three um, that I'm going to be focusing on. And you mentioned vacancies, and I know you talked a lot about that um, with Yo Ling when she was up here. Mm -hmm. um, and I will tell you that we're looking at creative ways to try to get people to join our team, especially for those positions that we've had a hard time, professional positions that we've had a hard time filling, engineers, architects, high-level accountants, looking at things like uh, signing bonuses. Signing bonuses is something that, you know, um, different industries are doing now. In fact, the counties are doing it, right? Maui County has done that for the police department. They'll do like a $20,000 signing bonus. You know, if you stick with them for five years or 10 years, I don't know exactly what the number is. You don't have to pay it back. But if you leave before then, you've got to pay it back. So signing bonuses with clawback provisions that will, you know, attract people to join our team. Um, they'll get a bonus and they'll hopefully stick with us for five years. And then at five years, it's really a decision point, right? Like, because five more years and then you're vested. And at that point, it's a little bit harder for them to leave. So, you know, that's one of the, um, one of the innovative things that I'd like to try, you know, for our department. The other one is um, obviously, you know, there's shortage differentials that we can utilize to try to um, make it a little more appealing uh, in terms of salary wise. There's also uh, repricing that could possibly happen, but that's not at my level. That would be, I think, with DHERD and uh, possibly with the unions. And then the, the last thing that I'll mention um, is this idea that I was, I've been having a little bit of conversation with Brenna, who's here. Um, or is she still here? She's still here. In fact, we just, I just emailed you the other day. Oh, good. Um, and that was, um, why don't we, you know, what's interesting about the state is we have this tremendous asset, right? It's called the University of Hawaii where our kids go and our, you know, not just kids, but everybody goes to try to get a good education, right? And they do a really good job at that. What if we were to look at a way that we could utilize that asset as a benefit for employees to join our team, mm -hmm. to commit themselves to this team by offering tuition waivers or 
tuition reimbursement, you know, so that if they do join you know, our team, there's a benefit such as that. That's not in existence now. Um, it may be for some other departments, but it's not available statewide. But when we're talking about benefits, that to me, and the reason I mention this, I have a senior, my wife and I, um, our son Riley is uh, ready to graduate and you know he's getting offers from schools and it is very, very costly to go to school. And if that is something that we can offer to our young people to attract them to stay here, maybe that's one way that we can start to fill these pukas that exist. Um, and then just also really quick center, I apologize, but we are also, um, we believe it or not, DAGS didn't have a Facebook page, okay, up until last week when we created our, I created the Facebook page for DAGS um, and an Instagram account. And I thought, my gosh, what are we doing? We are in the digital age. We don't have a Facebook page. How are we getting our message out there about people and positions and the work that we're doing? Um, and so we've already started linking up and posting some of the stuff from the DHERD Facebook page, which is really easy to share. Um, and already people are picking up on that and, you know, expressing interest, but it's doing things creative like that. Our LinkedIn, we don't even have a LinkedIn account. I'm working on that. I'm trying to get that set up, but that's where professionals, right, are out there looking for jobs. Why, why we didn't do that in the past, I really don't know. Um, but it's something that I think we need to do now. Um, and then finally, uh, and there's other things too, but I just wanted to mention that we are participating in job fairs. I think job fairs are important, but job fairs are important, but I want to be at those job fairs. I want leadership to be at those job fairs. So this not just, you know, an employee within personnel, you know, our personnel services office, you know, who's just there panning out a flyer, come join us at DAGS. Mm -hmm. I want to be there to be able to interact with potential applicants and to share that with them sort of the vision of where we're going to go with DAGS to get them excited about wanting to join government, to join our team. Um, but that's, those are some of the things that we're working on as it relates to vacancies. Okay. Senator. I, I just want to no, do a couple follow-ups. Sorry. So no thank you. I, I, uh, those are the kinds of solution minded things I was hoping to have heard from your deputy, and I'm glad that, that you're taking over the reins on that. So yeah, my concern was what was brought up about the vouchers, right? Mm -hmm. There are three vacancies and one person doing yeah. the work of four. So I'm just thinking that person is gonna be retiring real time soon if she, that person is doing the work of four now. Yeah, so interestingly enough, and I thank you for bringing that up, but I do wanna share something with you. Good. So. Those particular jobs that she was talking about, uh -huh. do you believe that since we started recruiting, we've gone through five lists, five lists of applicants? Okay. So that tells us something, right? That maybe we're either not hitting the right people um, or maybe that job needs to be re-looked at. Mm -hmm. Maybe it needs to be something else other than a pre-audit clerk too um, that you know, pays something like, you know, I don't know, $30,000. I don't know what the pay is, but it's very low, right? Because it's entry level. Um, but we need to take a hard look at these positions that we're not able to get recruited. Because to your point, we can't have that system fail. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Looking at descriptions, seeing outdated ones Absolutely. that require like a job, a college degree, when in reality, they don't. Absolutely. And, and I just want one more. Sorry. No, no, you guys... After Sorry, I, and I know you folks do. This is a um, vetting of the nominees. Or... Deferred maintenance, yeah. huge problem, especially since DAGS does um, neighbor island schools. Uh, so our understanding, and maybe we'll find out after the House budget passes through to us, is that the House budget is giving a huge chunk to BNF instead of DAGS for deferred maintenance. Um, how do you expect to claw back some of that money other than, yeah. I appreciate that question, Senator. Actually, um, I have already had a conversation uh, with the director, the BNF director about that. Okay. Um, and his request was, can DAGs help us? And I okay. said, absolutely. You know, we want to be part of that. We want to utilize those funds to attack this deferred maintenance problem that we have throughout the state. It's a huge problem. It, as you know, I'm preaching to the choir. Um, can we do a billion dollars? I want to see the, the method of finance. I want to see what kind of restrictions there are on it. I want to see how much time we've got. It's a lot of money to try to pump into the system, you know, to do some positive things. And I, I don't want to um, 
be in a place where we're having to explain why we didn't spend, you know, mm-hmm. a billion dollars, right? What were the limitations? What I will tell you is this, Senator, I wanted to share this with all of you is that we've signed on to the cooperative purchasing agreement for the job order contracting uh, that DOE has been doing, has been doing very successfully. If you're familiar with that, it really helps to expedite the process to be able to move projects forward quickly. Um, it's basically built out of a, you know, you, you have a book that you go to and they can have, they have pricing and then you can know exactly what it is that you have to uh, spend to do a project. And you have all the vendors have been, all the contractors have been vetted so you can move quickly. So this jock that I'm talking about, job work, this is going to be a game changer for DAGs. Um, so I'm very excited about that. As I said, we just signed on. Um, DOE is about to release their RFP. So they're going to find a, you know, a vendor to do this again. And we're going to be right there taking advantage of it. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Thanks, Senator. Good. Okay. Um, Senator Wall, do you have any questions for the nominee? I think so. That's Vice Chair, please. So, uh, Mr. Regan, thank you uh, very much. You answered my question about what your priorities are. But I was also happy to hear that you plan to go to the uh, job fairs in person uh, because it shows your servant's heart that you learn from your parents, that you actually want to have that impact on these young people that are out there. And uh, I also wanted to, but I just wanted to make an observation that uh, in going through the testimony that there were 96 people who were in support of your nomination, zero opposed. And so naturally that kind of brings up an interest. There was one comment though. And I, I was hoping that somebody for, that you beat up in the third grade would show up and testify against you just so I could get a, b- a bigger picture of, of you as your character, I have right? I based on that. Okay, okay. <laughs> But then when I looked at the comment that was made, it was actually very, uh, very positive and was praising you. And I think they just ticked the wrong box on the, the testifiers. So, but thank you very much for your uh, willingness to step forward. Thanks, Thanks sir. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, members? Uh, if not, um, I just have a few follow-up questions of my own. And um, let's see, it kind of touches upon what my uh, colleagues have said. And, um, Okay, give us give us your overall vision of the DAGs. You know, specifically what goals can be accomplished within the next four years and what types of annual benchmarks can be used to evaluate DAG's progress towards these goals. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of work to do at DAGs. There's no question about it. Um, the primary focus that we're going to be spending our time on is addressing those vacancies, as I had talked about a little bit earlier. We need to work through those vacancies. We need to get to a place where where our folks are not burning out, where they're not spending excessive hours over the weekends, when they should be with their families. Um, that is a very big priority for me. And, you know, like I mentioned, some of the things that we're going to be doing, you know, to move forward, you know, on that, um, we'd have to measure ourselves too. How effective, you know, is it when we go out, you know, and we participate in these job fairs, right? Are we able to recruit off of that? To me, that's a measurement, right? Are we successfully recruiting? You know, we want to reduce our vacancies. My goal is to reduce vacancies within the department by 25% by the end of this calendar year. Mm-hmm. That's my goal. I, that, if I make it, great. If I don't, I'll beat myself up and try to figure out how we can go forward and get that done. Um, but we need to tackle this vacancy issue. That's how serious this is. Like I, I can tell you that I think about it all the time, all the time. We were at a Red Cross event. Our, our son is in Red Cross. And I was talking to one of the young individuals that was there from UH. They were part of the Red Cross Club. And I said, oh, so what are you uh, studying? Oh, engineering. Oh, really? What, where, where are you in the program? Oh, I'm about to graduate. Have you thought about joining the state? That was my question to him. Mm-hmm. And his answer to me was, no, I never really thought about that. I said, you're in the engineering program. We need engineers. Are you doing any kind of programmatic outreach to the universities, community yeah. colleges, as well as to students? Students yeah. from Hawaii who may be going and, towards these schools in the mainland? And that is exactly what we need to do. And that's why we need to participate in these job fairs. And that's why we need to sit down with the schools, the accountancy school, with the engineering school. We need to be there. We need to be in front of them. We need to excite the students about joining our team. Have, I mean, they're always looking for speakers to come in, right? So having Chris Kinimaka go down there or someone from her team who is right in it, right? Right in the thick of construction to share how exciting it is to be a part of this, I think has tremendous value. Uh, I mean, I am in the process of setting up meetings with uh, with Brennan as well as um, on the engineering side, 
and then also with the um, the accountancy. I don't I don't really know the the director of the accountancy school, but I want to get in there so that we can have our people be a lecturer, like come in for a day and just talk about it, or even have them come visit us at DAX, mm -hmm. see what we do, see what see what our work is really about. But that's something that we need to do. What about benchmarks for deferred maintenance, as my colleagues thought? Yeah. Are you no. going to be establishing them and reporting back to us? How, where do you see benchmarks and being established? Should you be able to work with BNF on pulling down a large sum of that money? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, we're looking at um, having on-time job completion rates, right? I think we need to measure ourselves. How successful are we with meeting our goals? If we say it's going to be done by, you know, March 9th, and it's not done, we've failed, right? We There's something went wrong. Why? What happened, right? But making sure that we have these benchmarks to measure ourselves, I think is very critical. So on-time job completion rate, I think is something we need to look at. I put a, I have a number down of 95% on-time job complete. Maybe it needs to be 98%. I, I don't know what it needs to be, but it has to be better than an A, mm -hmm. right? Or it has to be an A or better, I should say. So in my mind, 95% is where is what I want to target. If we can do better than that, great. If we're not doing better than that, then we need to ask ourselves why, what's happening in the system. And that's where, to your point, having measurements is critical. If you don't measure it, how do you know how well you're doing? So having something like that, I think is really important. I also wanted to just mention very quickly, we do all these jobs, you know, out there, we change a doorknob, we uh, you know, fix a leaky faucet, you know, we, we paint something, we do some term, minor termite stuff here and there. Uh, but have we ever really asked our client, right, our customers, how well are we doing? How satisfied are you? Well, there's a customers that can attest to the fact that there's mold growing up downstairs, yeah. and leak water leaking out. Yeah, absolutely. So let's use that as a real thing. I mean, it is. When will that be fixed? And that's an unacceptable thing. And I've spent much time with Carol. Uh, downstairs, going through her offices, looking at the looking at the damage, trying to assess what we can do now, and then what we're going to have to do once the pool is fixed. Mm -hmm. The pool is the issue, mm -hmm. right? The pool is the issue. No matter what we do downstairs, it's just going to continue to get. It's going to come back. No matter what we do, it's going to come back. We're going to replace the tile. It's going to get wet, right? The pool has to be fixed first. So that is our number one project for this campus. That waterproofing project on that pool. It starts in May. Right after the session is done, we didn't want to interrupt the session. We know that you folks are busy. You know, there's going to be a lot of noise, you know, over there. But it has to happen. We've got to do it. So starting in May, that's going to that project is going to take effect, um, and then then we can start working on the interior of the building. You know, because then it won't leak anymore. Knock on wood. Uh, find some wood to knock on. But but Senator, really quick, Chair. I'm sorry. No. I just wanted to mention about you know quality control. Mm -hmm. Quality control. Quality assurance is where I was going with my comment earlier about measuring whether or not we're doing a good job. Are, are our customers satisfied? And if they're not, why? What can we do to make them satisfied, right? If our employees are, again, I'll just use the simple changing a doorknob. If we change the doorknob and we find out that, you know, something is wrong after we've done that quality in, uh, control and quality assurance inspection, maybe it's a matter of training. Maybe the individual who was doing the work wasn't properly trained on how to change a doorknob. I don't, I don't know, right? That's a very simple project, but uh, maybe it's something like maybe they didn't have the right tool. Maybe we need to buy the person the right tool so they can get the job done. Um, so things like that. But if we don't measure it and we don't go out there and take a look and score ourselves, how do we know how well we're doing? We just get this anecdotal, well, DAGS isn't doing this, DAGS not doing that. They're never responsive. They, you know, they can't successfully fix something, you know, but we need to go out there and inspect and we need to rate ourselves. And we need to get uh, those satisfaction surveys from those people that we serve. And again, I set a score of 95%, 95% satisfaction rate. If they believe we're doing a good job, then, then all right. If, and we're not, then we need to find out what we're doing poorly and fix it and do a better job. Was Jack responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the Halua Loa Elementary School on Hawaii Island? Yeah, thanks for that question. We um, we support all the neighbor island schools through a, a service level agreement. That service level agreement um, details what it is that DAGS does and what the what it is that the Department of Education does. Um, we the janitors um, are, that's part of their responsibility to maintain that um, and to address those kinds of issues according to the SLA. But let me just tell you a little bit about that. Um, so when I when that was raised to my attention, I got a call. Um, from a colleague um, of yours. And they said, hey, there's a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on over here? You know, you need to look into this. 
And I said, absolutely. So I got on the phone and I started calling our people in the district office and finding out what was happening over there. What was the issue? How do we get to this point? What are we going to do to try to fix it? I also told them that we are going to step up and help and support DOE in the efforts to address that problem in the school, regardless of whether it's in the SLA or not. So we offered all of that to, da- uh, to DOE. Um, if you need our people, you need our equipment, whatever it is that we can do to help you, we're going to be there to help you. Uh, another good example of that is on, the, on Hawaii Island, we have what's called um, a, a fogging system. These are transportable foggers. Uh, I don't know if that's a fogger or not over there, but um, you'll see them roll around. In fact, I brought two down to Carol uh, Taniguchi downstairs. Um, and these foggers were used for COVID, but the solution that you put in there for COVID also kills mold. And so what I did was I asked, I actually directed our Hilo, uh, Hawaii district office to move the equipment over from Hilo to Kona and to allow the schools to utilize those foggers put it in there. Let's just at least try this system and see what it does and see how it can help. Um, And so that's what we did. We offered it up to them. I don't think actually DOE didn't accept it. They didn't want to use it, but regardless it's there and we offered it, but those are the kind of things that we, that's the approach that we need to take. Well, that brings up a good example. You know, sometimes, and I think I touched upon one of my colleagues earlier things, you're going to face silo resistance from the other agencies. I mean, do you feel that you can bring a determination, perhaps some efforts from above you to try like a situation like this? Well, we don't yeah. want it. Well, something has to be done. Do you see what I mean? Do yes, you think I do. that that's in those situations, how would you respond or react? Or can you mm-hmm. push to ensure that these other departments will work with DAGs when the offer is made? Yeah. Thank you for that question, Chair. I'm a very collaborative leader. I like to bring people together to solve problems. Um, that's the way that I've operated since I've been at you know the county or at you know HTA or at DCCA. Uh, silos work for no one, um, and my ability to be able to bring different departments together, I think, um, has been proven. Um, you know, we were able to uh, you know break down those silos as you as I mentioned. You know, I I will do what I can to help my fellow departments regardless of whether it's in my wheelhouse or not. Mm-hmm. If they come to me and ask me for advice or direction or whatnot, I'm going to be open there and, and be willing to help and support them. Uh, I do believe working with the governor and working with the, they actually the governor and the departments have been excellent in terms of helping each other. I'm just straight up telling you my experience so far since December has been incredible partnership, um, willingness to help. And, you know, everybody that's here and everybody that submitted testimony and all that you, you can see it. There's a camaraderie, there's a respect, um, and there's not, you know, sort of backing up into your own corner and sort of, hey, you're on your own kind of thing. Um, but both the chamber and what's happening with the school over on Hawaii Island, they kind of both have a common thread in the fact that they were allowed to get to this state. And I guess one of the questions I have for you is what proactive steps are you going to take to get ahead of these things? I mean, clearly, You have deferred maintenance piling and piling and piling, and then all of a sudden you have health and safety issues emerging all over the place, which now require more money and more equipment to fix. So what are you going to do as a director of DAGS to try to get ahead of the curve so that smaller problems can be prioritized so they don't become bigger problems? Yeah, thank you. We have a list of hundreds of deferred maintenance projects. We categorize those deferred maintenance projects on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the worst. Um, when you look, excuse me, when you look at that list, anything six and above is in that category that you just described. It's, these are problem deferred maintenance projects. My goal is to tackle that list. I need, I need the funding and I need the support. If I get the funding and support combined with that jock program that I talked about, there is no question in my mind that we will work through that list and we will address those problems so that they don't become a level six so that we no longer have these problems elevating to a point where it might shut down a facility, where it might impact somebody's health, you know, where we might not be able to deliver services because of that facility being out of service, right? That is my goal. That is my intent. That's my commitment to you, Chair, is to work through that list to get that to a place where our folks aren't having to worry about whether or not they should be able to breathe or go into a facility. I mean, you are the interim director now. And so I think that hopefully 
as the interim and possibly director that you will communicate readily with us on this because we can't support you through funding, especially in the budgets being put together on the Senate side. We don't have constant regular communication with myself and the members is there. Are you willing to commit to this kind of communication so that it doesn't become an issue down the summer? Well, we didn't get the money from the legislature. Yeah, I am chair. That is my commitment to you. Um, it's always been my commitment to those that I serve is to be there and to collaborate and to communicate. Communication is key. Um, I'm more than willing to sit down. We can schedule regular one-on-ones. I'm happy to provide you reports and updates periodically to keep you and this, these, your committee members advised on what's happening. Um, one of the things that I really, I, I just wanted to share quickly about communication. Uh, DAGS also doesn't have a newsletter. <laughs> Didn't have a newsletter. I don't know when the last time it had a newsletter. Um, but I'm happy to announce that we issued our newsletter actually uh, yesterday, our first newsletter. I don't even know when the last time we did it, but this is the DAGS dispatch. I'm only on the front page of this first edition because I had to do a, um, I wanted to do a message to all of our employees. But in my mind, this is the first step in DAGS to build that communication link with our people. I wanna do something like this for you I want to do something like this. I would love to share this with you first and foremost, but I want to do a briefer for you so that I can keep you updated on projects in your district, especially for our neighbor islands. Uh, but regardless, any uh, for all of our senators, right? And uh, actually all of our legislators so that you can be abreast of what's happening. And so, then when the final, final question is probably the hardest because we do share a history from Maui and such. And, you know, issues arose when you were the managing director of Maui County, with Mr. Stant in particular. Mm -hmm. And I guess moving forward, you know, public corruption, these types of things that happened, that happened there. I mean, I'm not going to delve into the past, but what is your role as a director to be to ensure that things like this don't happen and you're going to instill accountability and ethics in the Department of Accounting and General Services? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I will just start by saying when I heard about what happened, I was absolutely disgusted. It, it was, it, it really, it hurt to see that that was happening. Um, but I will tell you this, I have an open door policy. I've always maintained an open door policy. I have the belief that we have a fiduciary responsibility to the people. This is not my money. It's not your money. It's the people's money right? It is technically sort of ours, but it's everybody's. We have a responsibility to use those funds properly so that they have trust in what we do, so that we maintain our integrity. As I mentioned, I have an open door policy. If anybody ever has any idea of fraud, waste, or abuse, they should know that they can come to me anonymously, talk to me, share with me what is happening. I will tell you that as managing director, I had a number of situations where people had come to me and shared situations, issues, concerns, things that they were worried about, things that they saw that didn't look right. And we took action on those things. If you remember, um, there's one that was particularly, I think, visible, and that was the public works within public works, the Department of Public Works. In fact, it was the uh, commercial kitchen in Wailuku at the base yard. Mm -hmm. If you remember that, mm -hmm. that was something that was brought to our attention. We immediately looked into it, immediately. And when we did, we shut it down. We put, we put people on leave, we locked down computer systems, we captured emails, we looked at text messages, we pulled records, we shut it down. I am not afraid of taking those kinds of mes measures to address things that come up. I am not afraid to look into those kinds of things. In fact, you know, when I first started, I reached out to our audit division and I asked them, do we have a fraud, waste or abuse hotline so that people can call our audit division and say, hey, there's something here. Maybe you want to take a look at it. Um, I think that's something that we need to do. There needs to be a place for our state employees, as well as citizens, if they see something, to report it so that we can go and look at it. We can find out what's going on. But my commitment to you, Chair, is that I will not stand for any, any kind of fraud, waste, or abuse. Thank you very much. Members, are there any final follow-up questions for the nominee? Yes. Yes, okay. So um, I want to thank you um, for a number of things. One is when I, after the WAM briefing, 
and I told you the problems with Pahoa High School. I am going to hold you to that, by the way, yep. that that deferred maintenance of our gym hopefully is finally on track. Yeah. So and I also want to thank you that you're looking at innovative ways to to recruit, especially with young people. It's 21st century. I don't know. Yeah why you folks haven't thought about social media earlier, but you're new. So I'm not going to, but um, because let's face it until really I became an adult, I didn't quite realize what DAGs did. So having the social media presence, especially if you folks are going to do interning and recruiting from the young is huge. But the, the big thing I think I want you folks to think about is because you are tackling deferred maintenance and because as as our colleagues have our pet projects, whether it's convention center and stadium, um, the various problems with Maui in my, in my district, it's, um, you know, Pahoa High School, Mountain View, you know, all, all the neighbor island schools. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should consider what the Department of Education did, which is to provide us with a database as to each project so that instead of us calling you folks constantly, we will know the timeline of when things are going to be. And, and I know that's a big project for you, but I see Doug Murdoch there, maybe he could help you out with um, info, um, IT upgrades mm -hmm. um, to do something like that. Because if you're talking about a billion dollar budget, having this kind of database with yep. timelines, mm -hmm will help all of us know that you are actually doing what you're saying you're doing. Love that idea, okay. Senator. Thank you. Thank you very much. I strongly echo that big time. I mean, because you're going to be under the same gun the DHHL is under. Yep. And I think by having that, you know, it create a level of transparency in public accounting, but also to, we can see, the public can see where you're at on all of these and perhaps even facilitate more interest from contractors and others. So, mm -hmm. Any other questions at all of the nominee? If not, we're going to recess uh, for a decision make just to talk story with my colleagues. We're going to go ahead and recess. Thank you very much, uh, members. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you to the nominee. My usual custom, as you know, is to usually push back decision-making on these things for more conversation. But in discussion with my colleagues today, and given the support of your family, everybody's here, it's best we make a recommendation here and now. And, you know, we've known each other a long time, which is actually a good and a bad thing. <laughs> but, you know, when you came into this job, we had a good interview. And I think the interview today kind of echoed the things that we've seen. You're growing into this job. You're willing to bring new ideas into it. You're willing to be responsive and you're willing to follow through, most importantly. Your commitments that you've made to us, we've seen you work, working and acting on them. And, and yes, uh, deputy, this bodes well for you that you are gonna have a good deputy at your side. And so with that, rec members, uh, the recommendation of the chair on the nominee for the governor's message is to advise and consent. The chair votes aye. Okay, chair's recommendation is to advise and consent on GM 520. Chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Wakai. Yes. Senator Owa. Aye. Measure passed. Thank you much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, this adjourns right here.